Morning, everybody. It's the 19th of January. I'm Joe Neighbour from Signal Centre and talking ball this morning all by myself. Steve's still on annual leave, hoping he's having a lovely time. Um, so interesting things going on in the markets at the moment. Bit of a risk off feel, certainly across the board in uh, equity markets, although a little bit uh, of a bounce back may be occurring today. Um, in terms of what's moving markets at the moment, the issue that's front and centre and seems to be driving a lot of volatility at present is the benchmark treasury yields, which look poised to surge past 2% as traders lay bets that the Federal Reserve could opt for a supersized rate hike in March. The 10-year yield has climbed up to 37 basis points so far in January to 1.88%, which is set for its fastest monthly increase since November 2016. So rising yields and anxiety over earnings growth is now poised to deal a bit of a blow to certain areas of the market, particularly tech seems to be being quite uh, hit so far and on the brink of correction territory. Uh, correction territory, um, obviously a 10% move um, would indicate that. Um, so we are keeping a close watch on those numbers. Obviously, we are underway with earnings season as well, and there'll be some really well-watched numbers coming out of the US um, for this latest uh, quarter. Uh, Goldman Sachs yesterday tumbled by the uh, most in more than 18 months after the firm's stock traders posted lackluster fourth quarter results. Another sign that the frenzied market activity spurred by the pandemic is now starting to cool. Um, the purchase of Activision Blizzard for 68.7 billion will give Microsoft some of the biggest video games, consoles, and smartphones um, uh, at its next phase of computing. So that's a, a pretty big deal that's uh, been ongoing uh, in the US. Um, so wait and see if uh, that has any impact on the tech space. Um, in terms of what's going on in the COVID situation, Germany joined the countries like the UK, France and Italy in recording more than 100,000 new COVID-19 infections in one day, adding evidence that the highly contagious Omicron variant is spreading fast across Europe's largest economy. Still, Omicron's grip on the UK is weakening, which uh, you know will be um, welcome for the, uh, the Germans in particular. Um, as we set to uh, sort of end the uh, the peak phase of the Omicron variant, which uh, of course is good news. So let's get stuck into some charts. First up, we're going to take a look at the dollar index. So that had a really strong move to the upside yesterday, buoyed by the rising yields um, seen in the 10-year. Uh, obviously, a flight to riskier, uh, sorry, less riskier assets is being seen. Dollar index being one of those. We're back within this bullish channel. We've taken out resistance that was highlighted yesterday by this blue line here at around 95.57, and uh, we look set to maybe continue moving higher on the dollar index for now. So this blue line here. This support, which was marked by this high that we posted back in September, has done a very nice job on a retest. So we've seen a breakout to the upside, we've seen a retest of that level, which has held very nicely. This was the completion of the double bottom pattern on the dollar index. So for me, the outlook looks very favorable indeed for dollar index. And I think we are going to see higher prices. So the next big level to consider is this 96.94 level. Above that, we'll be targeting a move to 97.72, which is a 61.8% FIB level. And is also the measured move of this smaller double bottom pattern that was completed back here in September. So all in all, looking pretty good for the dollar index. So if we take a look at Euro, US dollar, what we'll see here is that that's rallied into this downtrend resistance line. It looks as though we were going to get a bit of a break to the upside, but that since failed by posting an engulfing candle on the 14th of January. And since then, we've seen continuation, uh, a continuation lower. So it looks like lower prices are set to be seen in euro dollar in line with the dominant trend, which remains bearish. We've got some target levels on the downside here at 110.58 to consider. Um, still in a bit of a choppy phase, I guess we were looking for this to be some sort of triangle pattern or ending kind of wage formation, but that hasn't materialized. So maybe in fact, what we're seeing here is just a consolidation before a continuation lower. Looking at cable, that's obviously had a really nice run to the upside in recent weeks, as we can see here, but it's rallied into this 50% Fibonacci level, which is highlighted by this green line on the daily chart. So this is a measurement from the high here, 
posted in June last year to the lows that were posted most recently in December, December the 7th. So projecting the Fibonacci levels onto the chart, the 50% level has done a fantastic job. So we saw a rejection there with the posting of a shooting star candle. It was backed up by an engulfing candle on the next session. And then we've seen a break of this short term trend. So it looks like we could be set for a continuation lower in sterling versus the US dollar, or at least a bit of a correction following this sharp move to the upside. So that could be one uh, to consider playing on the downside today. Taking a look at euro sterling, no changes expected there, still trading very much in bearish formation. Yesterday, we had a little bit of an attempt at trying to get back into this channel. Uh, as you can see, we posted highs up to 87.79 yesterday. That may have suckered in a few uh, bulls thinking that this would be the turning point, but sadly it wasn't. It just rallied into this blue level of resistance. We've got 83.80 before rejecting quite considerably and actually engulfing all of the previous day's session. So uh, we have a a really large engulfing or bearish outside day that was formed yesterday on the chart. Bit of strength today, only up by 0.07%. So it looks as though lower prices are going to be seen. We are targeting this support level here at 82.75, which we have to go all the way back to these levels here, 2019, to see why that was relevant. So that looks to be where we are headed in the short to medium term. Taking a look at uh, dollar yen. That broke to the new highs back here in uh, the early part of January. It failed to hold on to those and we saw a corrective move lower, but uh, it seems to have stopped the selling here with this candle posted on the 14th of January. A really nice reversal, backed up the next session with further gains. So ultimately looking for higher prices there while we remain bullish on the US dollar. If we take a look at the riskier currencies like Aussie, for instance, we can see that the selling has continued there following the reversal again posted between the 13th and the 14th of January. Uh, more selling yesterday. Looks as though we are going to see lower prices there, particularly if we continue to see strength in the US dollar. So looking at this. I've got a bit of a channel, a corrective channel that's formed here. Uh, if we get a break to the downside below this, then I think that would be uh, a sign that we are likely to see a continuation lower in that particular pair. Let's take a look at cryptos next. So they continue to suffer as there is clearly sort of risk aversion in markets at the moment for riskier assets like cryptocurrencies and stock indices. As you can see, we've got this blue line overshadowing the price that seems to be containing the price action for now. And while that remains the case, we are expecting to see lower prices. We posted these key lows in recent months at 39,600. And it looks set uh, to retest those levels again in the coming session. So how we react to that level, as you can see, we had a, a reaction here in September last year and another reaction here uh, on the 10th of January, both of which um, got buyers back interested in Bitcoin. Will that happen again? We'll have to wait and see. If it doesn't, then we looks as though we'll be sliding down to this 50% FIB level that we have at 36,430. And if that fails to hold, then we'll be looking for a retest of this 30,000 level, which uh, was so um, strong as a support level back in 2021. As you can see on a number of occasions, we tested that level and it ended up being a really uh, good launch pad for further gains in Bitcoin. So uh, that, those are the key levels to watch there. Um, so Ethereum, that um, is underperforming Bitcoin at the moment, still trading low, as we can see, trapped by this downtrend. Uh, we've got this key low that was posted on the 10th of January, which for me is an interesting level to watch, 2,928. If that fails, then we're likely to see a slide down to this next level of support that we have at 20, uh, sorry, 2,651, which is these key lows here from the 21st of September last year. If that fails to hold, then maybe what we formed is some sort of top pattern and we could actually see uh, considerably lower prices maybe on Ethereum back down to these levels that we posted back in 2021. So this is the so, sort of corresponding level to the 30,000 level on Bitcoin uh, and that would be down at 17, uh, 1728. So potentially some you know ugly downside um, that we could see in Ethereum. But you know we do have these support levels to consider in the shorter term and we're hopeful of course that these will do a job. Moving on to commodities, oil yesterday hit a seven-year high. It uh, quite easily surpassed 
this first level of resistance that we had on the chart at uh, around $85. That was the previous high that we hit on the 25th of October. And as I said yesterday, we have to go quite a way back to the left hand side of the chart to see why that level was relevant previously back in 2012, November 2012. And then above that, we've got a level here to consider from April 2013. So we have got pretty close to that April 2013 level at uh, 86.39. We've stalled just in front of that and posting a bit of red on the, on the charts today. First time we've seen that uh, for a few days, but it may only just be a mild correction before we see continuation, uh, a continuation higher in oil. So nothing really um, overly phasing for the uh, balls on oil at the moment. Still looks as though we may see high prices, continued demand for oil at the moment. If we take a look at gold, again, not much to go on here. Still pretty boring if we're really honest. Prices are range bound. We are below this resistance level at 1830. And while that remains the case, there is, in my opinion, scope for further downside towards this level here at 1760. Um, I don't really see any clear opportunities personally at the moment in oil, uh, in gold, sorry. So um, I'm uh, avoiding that for now. Let's take a quick look at silver. That's quite interesting because we've actually seen a break above that resistance level that corresponds to the one we've just talked about on gold, actually, at 23.43. So that looks quite interesting. Maybe what we're seeing here is some sort of bottom formation. We've clearly got uh, big levels of support here on silver between 21.66 to 21.89. So maybe um, silver is the one that's going to lead the charge here on the precious metal side of things and there could be some opportunities on that really nice breakout yesterday a close above that level and we are seeing further upside on silver today so um, that looks pretty interesting and may even be a candidate for me to look at on the gun to the head challenge in a moment um okay let's look at the stock indices now so yesterday we posted a engulfing candle on the FTSE 100. We uh, engulfed all of the previous day's session uh, from the 17th of January, uh, posting a, a fairly meaty red candle. We did close off the worst less, uh, levels of the session, which is a bit encouraging. And also, if we look at how price action is shaping up today, we did see initially some weakness. But as you can see, we're reversing that now, posting some sort of uh, doji candle or hammer candle, potentially, if this continues to strengthen. So maybe there's a little bit of a short term uh, reversal in the offering here from the FTSE 100. Obviously, the FTSE 100 is a little bit different from some of the other indices that we focus on because it is so heavily weighted by banks and by commodity stocks. Now, commodities. Um, like the uh, diversified miners, but also some of the big oil majors like uh, Royal Dutch Shell and BP, they're obviously going to help influence the overall um, outlook of the index. So they are being used as an inflation hedge, I would have thought. Um, but also with the banks on, on that side of things, if we're talking about higher interest rates, that's going to be a really positive thing for banks because they can obviously start charging more on things like lending. And that's primarily how you know banking stocks go about uh, making profits. So um, really quite interesting FTSE probably um, going to be hanging around these sort of levels, particularly while this situation about interest rates rises in the UK and the US continues to rumble on. We've just seen fresh data out of the UK as well today on inflation, uh, and that's risen to 5.4%. So um, yeah, the FTSE looks as though it's probably set to continue outperforming at the moment. If we look at the DAX, as we can see, it's a little bit of a different story here. We failed at these resistance levels up at around about 16,300 and we are continuing to see red form on the chart. So we posted a, a pretty ugly looking day yesterday. It looks as though we're going to be um, trading within a range here on the DAX and the lower end of that range comes in at 14,810. So if this corrective mode continues in stocks, then that is kind of the level we think prices could potentially go to on the German market. And of course, they're facing their own issues with uh, the latest wave of Omicron ripping through Germany at the moment with over 100,000 cases um, registered yesterday. So let's take a look at NASDAQ. So this is really where, um, you know, things are getting exciting from a, a technical perspective on um, the US markets at the moment. I'm just going to remove that because that was a, a trade I attempted a couple of days ago. Um, so for me, what we've done here is broken down through a key level of support here between 15 1500 and 15538. Yesterday, we saw the first close below that level for some time. 
um, to confirm that we've seen a break of the range and also a break of the trend. Now that trend isn't a trend line that goes back to the start of the move that we posted um, at the height of the pandemic, or is it? Uh, no, so we're going back to September 2020. Um, so a decent amount of support has been offered at this level, but now importantly, we've seen a break of that and a break of that range. Now I've projected a move lower towards this region here, which is at 14,300. The way I've done that is measured the high to the low, assuming that this is a range that we formed and projected that lower. And I've got this measurement down here. Below that, we've got a key support level for me at 14,066. But it looks like we are in uh, corrective mode here and set potentially to see lower prices. Now, this is also quite interesting because we haven't seen the big tech names report their latest rounds of earnings yet. That's going to be coming up in the next uh, couple of weeks or so. So, you know, it really is a pivotal time for NASDAQ. Overall, the picture remains positive. Don't forget that. But as we know, there's a lot of participation in the tech names and in the US market. So I imagine there'll be a lot of fresh money that's sitting in here that is now starting to worry on the fact that we've seen this breakdown. Um, so we could see, uh, you know, if we do get a, a mass um, exit, a, a lot of this retail money or new money that's entered the market start panicking and hit the exit at the same time, that could exacerbate the sell off in the NASDAQ. So just do bear that in mind. Um, let's just take a quick look in terms of percentage to see how far we have come off of the highs on NASDAQ. Um, and if we go by where we are currently, it's at 9.31% lower from the high. If we go by the low that we've just seen overnight, then we have entered that correction territory by uh, dipping over 10% from the highs on the NASDAQ, which of course isn't insignificant. Um, OK, let's take a look at the S&P 500. That's at a pivotal point as well. Um, it's hit the lower end of the uh, trend line. If we look at the trend line, why this is relevant, we go back to these lows here that we posted in February 2021. And as you can see, we've got uh, over three touch points, which is what we need to confirm an uptrend. Um, we haven't quite broken this on a closing basis yet. We've also got this horizontal support to consider at 4,580. So we're below it at the moment. But if you look at the shape of the candle, it uh, has obviously made lows overnight down to this kind of region at 4,548. But we are seeing a reversal at the moment, try and take shape. We're trying to see a recovery. It looks as though there's been some dip buying action that's taken place. Can they hold on to this support, uh, both on a horizontal and a trend basis? If so, then this could be uh, a really good opportunity to buy the dip on the S&P 500. But looking at what we're seeing on the NASDAQ, I would be a little bit concerned because we're not seeing that marry up across the different indices. The S&P is obviously a broader index. It doesn't have as much influence on tech. But um, nonetheless, you know, this is a really important market to be watching at the moment. If this breaks down, then it could spark a deeper correction in the US markets over the short to medium term. Um, that will do, I think, on that front. I think that's enough for us to, to keep an eye on. Of course, you know, we're seeing kind of mirror images of this across other indices, with the exception of the FTSE 100 due to the weighting uh, of the constituents that we have on the UK market. So let's take a quick look at the gun to the head trades. Yesterday, I tried to fade oil um, into those major resistance levels that we spoke about earlier when we went through the charts. It didn't work out for me. I was 72 ticks offside at 9 p.m. or 0.35 R on that. So it wasn't uh, a disaster by any means. It wasn't stopped out or, or a full 1 R loss. But uh, of course, I would have preferred a win. But it wasn't to be on this occasion. It was a speculative counter trend trade. So there's a couple of bits going on in the markets today that are taking my fancy. One of which is you know, the Nasdaq. We've seen a breakdown here. Do I then go with a, you know, a further breakdown there and an acceleration of the selling? Or looking at the S&P, is there a case here for buying the dip, given that it's trying to hold on to this trend support level and also this horizontal support level at 4,580? The other thing that caught my interest was um, cable because we've seen a break of the short term trend on this one on the daily chart, as you can see here. My thinking was we are going to maybe see a continuation lower on that one. So I've got a couple of ideas to explore. Um, I've just looked at them on the daily chart at the moment. So what I'm going to do is take a, a look on the intraday time frame just to see if there's anything there that uh, grabs my attention. So this is the hourly chart on cable. 
Um, what I'm quite interested in here is this candle that's been posted between seven and eight o'clock this morning, UK time, really big engulfing. So we've tried to make a new high, but we've rejected that quite considerably, as you can see. So for me, that indicates that there are willing sellers out there and that we don't have enough uh, momentum at the moment for a recovery to take shape on this one. So um, I would be looking to maybe sell that. Uh, at current levels, which is 1.3597. Stop loss above this high that was posted at 7 a.m. this morning. So only a 26 uh, tick stop. Already I'm a couple of ticks offside. You can see that move there uh, at 136.21. And I'd be looking to target a move lower on cable. Now just uh, have a look over to the left hand side, see if there's any obvious levels that we can maybe target. And if I can't see anything obvious, then what I'll do is look for some Fibonacci levels. So we've got a key low here up to this key high. Uh, and let's have a look for a 38.2 or a 50% Fib level. So we've got 38.2 there at 135.28. So that gives me a 2.5R potential return. In fact, if you were copying that, you'd get an even better entry level now. Uh, than the one that I just did is at 136.00 at the moment. So um, I'm going to go with that. I think that's that was the, the one that initially stood out to me earlier. Um, I would have maybe looked at the US indices, but there's a, a little bit of confliction there as to what's going on between the NASDAQ and the S&P. Um, this is the NASDAQ, as you can see, a uh, really strong move to the upside on that today, although I don't particularly like what I'm seeing on the daily setup. If I saw this on the S&P, as we can here, um, then we've got a really nice reversal candle that's posted there on the European Open, which I really like the looks of, actually. So, um, you know, potentially another trade for you there. Maybe a two for one should we do today. Buying that S&P there, targeting a move maybe up to this sort of cluster of previous highs with a really tight stop loss. You know, what I'm doing there is calling the bottom basically on the day uh, with a stop loss of 4543. So looking for maybe a 3R return there on the S&P today. So it's a two for one. Um, OK, data wise today, we've got Canadian CPI due out. Price is expected to rise 4.7% in November. That comes out at 1.30 UK time. Uh, 1.30 UK time. Also, we have the US housing starts and building permits for December. Starts are expected to fall 2% and permits are expected to cr increase 0.4% month on month. So a few bits to keep interested in today. Um, of course, we've got the aftermath of the Goldman Sachs numbers as well that were posted yesterday. And we saw a big move to the downside on that. Um, so trade safe today, everybody. If you are involved in markets, uh, of course, risk management is always uh, the most important thing when it comes to trading and make sure you've got a plan in place. I'll be back tomorrow with some more and uh, take care in the meantime. Goodbye.